guys, it's Kelly Slimp, licensed and certified speech language pathologist, and welcome back to my channel. Super glad you guys are here. And so if you are liking this content and this is super helpful for you, make sure to hit the thumbs up button on the bottom of this video and leave a comment down below on your child's favorite activity. And that way I can maybe do a video on this or your comments or your questions down below. I'm really good about responding to you guys. And again, that's how all of these videos are made based off of parent request. And so today, based off of parent request, I had a lot of feedback on my other video, which I'll put right here, that was really aimed towards children with autism and how to increase their attention span and also increase their eye contact. And so a lot of parents are saying, my child doesn't have autism, but our pediatrician or a, a referring physician or the psychologist or the neurologist or another provider or your speech therapist is saying, um, we need to increase your child's attention span. And at first you might be like, I don't, I don't get it. Why, why do we have to do that? And it's because children learn almost everything through play and through interaction. And if your child is not able to play for a length of time, stay and play is the coined terminology here by Laura Mize, then they're really not able to soak up all of that information and they're not able to build off of foundational skills, which we know is a pre-linguistic skill to talking. So your late talking toddler might just need attention span increase and that way they're able to soak in more information and stay and play and learn all of these skills. So for example, a child is not able to combine two words until they're able to combine two toys into play because they don't understand the concept in general. And so again, this is just a pre-linguistic skill of how to increase your child's attention span. So diving into it, how long should my child be attending to something? Typically in minutes, it is twice your child's age. So for example, if your child's two, it's gonna be four minutes. If your child is two and a half, it's gonna be five minutes. If they're three, it's gonna be six minutes. And that is without you interacting. A lot of times what we see is a child, if they're playing, doing this, Oops, it's supposed to all fall off. So they're just falling off and then they're walking away, right? They dump things out of the bag and then they walk away. And that might be where their developmental skill is and it's called dumping. So if your child is at the dumping level, the first thing I wanna do is teach the child how to play with this. So I might, might make funny noises, I might draw attention to it, and then also once your child is able to do this and they know what to do with it, you can work on the colors if you really wanted to, requesting my turn, whatever it is. And then how we drag out the attention just in using this specifically, you could also do it with a puzzle or with food, whatever it is. Your child wants one, I say, oh, blue, whoa, oh no, oh, okay, hold, oh, whoa. Whoa, whoa, blue. And you just act like you are so clumsy, right? And I'm like, oh no. Why? Because you just attended to that for about seven seconds extra than me just giving it to you. So that is one of the most fun ways I usually do this. Sometimes I'll look for objects that I put on my head just to draw a little bit of attention to it. Another way that I do it is put a bell across the room and every time your child puts one on, they run across the room and they hit the bell. I uh, got this on Amazon for $6. Been super fun, the kiddos love to hit the bell. And also it turns an activity like putting these on every time they put one on, now they have to run across the room, hit the bell, which is super fun and run back. That is incorporating following directions, a play routine, joint attention, a multiple step instructions, and also um, some sensor integration because a lot of our kiddos, a lot of our little friends are sensory seekers and so what we're what we're doing is amping up amping up those gross motor skills and that really kicks the brain into gear so they're able to um, improve taking in all of this information and the brain's able to process it. So whereas you wouldn't think running is gonna help a child pick up on words, it really is, I promise. So this video again is for kiddos who are late talkers or might just need a little bit of help increasing their attention span so that you can teach them skills like pointing to something in a book. You're like, my child just wants to turn the book like this. Um, I also have another video out on how to read a book with your child and how to make it fun. I'm gonna put it right here. And so a lot of those skills are also incorporated in reading a book and you can do those same principles with that. The second way that you can do, <laughs> or the second thing that you can do is even just using some bubbles and instead of just opening the bubbles and blowing them, we can just drag it out. So I'm saying, oh, okay, we're ready for bubbles. This is exactly what I do. <laughs> and then I'll say, open, oh, should I open? Okay, let's open. And I'm just using some hand cues if you need those. I'll put the link down below. And then we pull out and we, one, oh, two, 
and you could even hold back on three, but then you blow the bubbles and then we go pop, 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 right? And then now instead of just opening the bubbles and blowing it, which takes like three seconds, we can drag this out. Sometimes I drag this out into a minute and a half, depending on the child and their patience. And every time we make it a little bit more fun and exciting. And now we do a dance while we're um, popping our bubbles. So um, that is another way that you can do this. Also, social games and routines are, are great because, again, we're incorporating following directions like Ring Around the Rosie. Maybe instead of falling down the first time, we have to sing it twice before we fall down. Or if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If your child will attend to that for about two minutes, try to do an extra step. Maybe we add stomp our feet. Maybe we add turn around. Maybe we add say hooray. Um, we just add a little bit at a time. We're not trying to jump from one minute to you know 14 minutes we're trying to jump from one minute to one minute and 10 seconds your child will attend to a puzzle right or they'll do this maybe twice and then they get they get lost or they get bored we just have to amp it up we have to make it even more fun maybe we put this on our head Achoo! and we sneeze it off or maybe we hide it and maybe we go on a scavenger hunt to find these pieces now and now this activity which i could do in about four seconds is now a 10 minute search and find scavenger hunt activity and we're using words like on top and underneath and behind um, and we're working on requesting so we're incorporating a lot of those skills which i love another great tool or resource that you could grab is a tunnel i love tunnels i get this from a lot of ideas from my ot friends and also from other providers in early intervention and the tunnel is great um, i also did a video talking about a tunnel as well with magnets and how to play with magnets. And so you want to make it super fun and engaging, but also drag out the activity, drag out a shorter activity, such as putting these on again. I'm just going to use the same thing over and over again. This can be anything though. It could be any toy or any game that your child likes. And then you're going to put one at the end of the tunnel, have them crawl through, maybe do a loop-de-loop -loop, and then come back and put it on. So again, we're just dragging out a play routine. We're creating a new play routine. If you're playing with Play-Doh, we're incorporating some sensory play like Play-Doh, sand. You can put objects, your little mini objects, into a box. So I would just dump these in. I have my little speech tree company objects in here. We're going to dump them in. And then this is now a search and find for all of our R words. Kids love this. You can hide it. And instead of just pulling this out and saying, what is this? It's a rose, good job, right? No, we're gonna dig in here. Oh my gosh, we're making a mess. Sometimes making a mess is great. Sometimes I include cleaning up. And so after we take the rose out, after we take all the objects out, then we have to put them back in and we say, bye rose, bye ball, <laughs> bye pirate, whatever it is that we're working on. We put them all back in and we tell them bye and we clean up. And then now the activity that used to take you know, one minute with our little objects now takes 10 minutes after following through with the whole routine, digging through the paper, and then also telling them bye and cleaning up. So those are my top tips, tricks, and strategies. But also I just wanna mention this last thing in regards to the iPad, a lot of times that's what I see whenever I go into the home is mom or dad or grandma will tell me, will they attend to the iPad fine? <laughs> which is great in some aspects, but what's happening is it's really hindering your child's ability um, to maintain attention to a slower pace. So the iPad and the TV, usually things on the screen takes place five times faster than they do in real life. And so it's called an iPad effect. You push something, something happens, push something, something happens, push something, something happens. And so your child's used to pushing something, something happening, things moving five times faster. And now they want a cookie and they're falling on the floor and tantruming because you didn't stop what you were doing right then and high knees it in there and get them a cookie, right? And so really try to decrease that iPad time unless you're on a plane or a bus or you know whatever it is where your child really needs to be contained. But also, the uh, one more thing, sorry guys, I'm just like going off the top of my head here now, but if you, your child should probably not be sitting and attending to you know a, a screen or even maybe like a teletherapy uh, appointment, they really need to be up and moving and doing things in between their session or in between each activity. So really incorporate those gross and fine motor skills because if your child is sensory seeking, that's why they're leaving. One, it's not fun enough. Two, they're seeking out more sensory input. And three, they really need to get their bodies regulated. And so that is what's appropriate is playing, rolling on the floor, um, gross motor skills, uh, you know, social games and activities like ring around the rosy. If you're happy, you know it, clap your hands. 
playing with toys, teaching a play routine. Um, these are all working on all of those pre-linguistic skills that we talk about over and over again that are gonna help your little late talkers talk even earlier, which is gonna be great. So um, remember that typically developing children usually have to hear something up to 50 times before they correlate the object with the word. So I'm saying don't just try these techniques one time, try them over and over and over again, and then eventually you will be successful. Just like if we were trying to learn yoga, right? The first time we did it, we were like, this is impossible. But now that we do it all the time, it gets easier and easier. And the same goes for your little one. Okay, guys, so that's all I have for today. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.